Hello students and welcome to Engineers Academy. Do hit the subscribe button if you are here for the first time. Now we are going to solve this simple problem from Vector Mechanics for Engineers by Baron Johnston, Chapter 3. And the same sample problem says that a cube of side A is acted upon by force P is shown. Determine the moment of that force P about A, about the edge AB, about the diagonal AG of the cube. Using the results of part C, determine the perpendicular distance between AG and FC. So this sample problem is very important. This will um, give you the walkthrough to find the moment about a point, about a, a line, and how to find the perpendicular distance between the force and a given line about which we have already determined the moment. So we have this cube which has an edge of A. So all the edges are of dimension A units and this force P is acting from F to C. And we are required to find the moment about this point A, then the moment about this edge AB, and then the moment about this diagonal AG. So first of all, we are going to find the moment about point A. So we can say that the moment, this is the solution to part A. So we can say that the moment about part A, we can find it by using the cross product method. So this will be MA and this will be equal to R cross that force P. And this R will be a position vector, which will start from A and which will end on any point on the line of action of this force P. So we can either choose this R is R of F relative to A, or we can say R of C relative to A. So we can say this could be R of F relative to A, or we can say this could be R of C relative to A. Both will give us the same answer. So we can say that this will be equal to R, the position vector of point F relative to A, or we can say this will be the position vector of C relative to A cross product with that force P. So we have to find the either this vector or this position vector and we have to represent this force P as a Cartesian vector because both of these are the vectors. This is the cross product method. So first of all, we have to find um, the position vector of point F relative to A. So to, to find this position vector, uh, we have to start from point A and try to reach that point uh, F in the X, Y and Z direction. So this is our X, this is our Z direction and this is our Y direction as shown in this diagram. So this is I, this is J unit vector and this is K unit vector. So from A, we need to reach that point F while traveling along the X, Y and Z direction. So from A, I need to travel A units in the negative Y, this is positive Y. So in the negative J, we need to travel A units. So we will write minus A J. So we will reach this point E. And from this point E, we need to travel A units in the positive X. So we can say A units in the positive I. And since we have reached that point F without traveling in the z direction so this means that the z coordinate of this position vector is zero so a i minus a j plus zero k this is the position vector of that point f relative to a and then we have to find that force p vector so p vector will be equal to p magnitude so p magnitude is p times the unit vector from f to c because that force p is acting from point f to c so we can say this force P and the unit vector from F to C will be the position vector from F to C divided by the magnitude of that position vector. So now we have to find uh, the position vector which is acting from F to C. So again, using the same method, starting from F, we'll try to reach that point C while traveling along the X, Y, and Z direction in any order. So we can say that this force P multiplied by the unit vector so from F, we need to travel A units in the negative Z. So this is the positive Z. We are traveling in the opposite direction. So A units in the negative Z means that minus A in the negative K, or we can say A units in the negative K. So we will reach that point G. And from point G, we need to travel A units in the positive Y. So we can say plus AJ. 
and since we have reached that point c without traveling in the x direction so the x coordinate of this position vector is zero and then the magnitude of this uh, position vector so the magnitude will be zero square plus a square plus a square under the square root so a square plus a square is this is 2 a square under the square root all this is equal to square root 2 a so we can write that this magnitude is square root 2 a now we can say that this force p vector is equal to 0 i if if we divide each of these component by this magnitude and multiply it with p so we can say that this will be a divided by square root 2 a into p j and then minus a divided by square root 2 a p k so now a cancels out here you guys can see this a will cancel out this will cancel out so we will have that force p is equal to 0 i plus p divided by square root 2 j minus p divided by square root 2 k so this is the Cartesian vector representation of that force P. Now putting everything in this and taking the cross products, as we know that while finding this cross product, we have to use the uh, determinant method. So we can say that MA will be equal to, this will be I, J, and K. And here we will have that position, the components of the position vector uh, of F relative to A. So we have A, minus a and 0 so these are the components of this and then we will write the components of that force p so this row will have 0 p divided by square root 2 and minus p divided by square root 2 so now finding out this cross product using the first row so we can say that this will be so we will hide this row this column so this minus this so this and this will become 0 so we can say that uh, minus a into minus a into this minus p divided by square root 2 will become plus so we can say that plus p divided by square root 2 a into i and then for j we have to hide this row this column so with j we need to write minus and so this into this minus 0 so we can say that again we will have and with j we, we always write minus sign so we can say minus a into minus p divided by square root 2 so we can say minus p divided by square root 2 into a into j and then for k we need to hide this row this column so this minus this so we can say for k this will be p divided by square root 2 a into so now if we if we simplify this this is moment about point a so this will be p divided by square root 2 a i and this will become minus into minus is plus so plus p divided by square root 2 a j and plus p divided by square root 2 a k And similarly, we can write this as p divided by square root 2 a i plus j plus k. So this is the moment about that point a. Now the second part of this problem says that we have to find the moment about the edge a b. Now part b moment about the edge a b. So moment about a b. So now for moment about a b since we have found this moment at point a and this this is the cartesian vector representation of that moment at a which has three components along the i j and k so we have the moment at a which is having component in the positive i in the positive j in the positive k so this is the cartesian vector representation this is the m a x component this is m a y component this is m a z component now we want to find the moment along a b so we have to take the dot product of that moment at point a with the unit vector along the edge a b and we can say the unit vector along the edge a b 
and the unit vector along the edge AB is parallel to the x-axis. So this means that edge AB, or we can say that a vector which will be acting from A to B is going to be in the I direction. So this means that if we draw a vector, so its unit vector from A to B will be the same unit vector along the x-axis. So we can say that this unit vector is along the uh, x-axis. So this is along, we can say that we can replace this by I unit vector. So we can say this will be MA dot part with I. So we can say that MAB will be equal to the dot product of MA with the unit vector I. So if we take the take the dot product of this uh, Cartesian vector with unit vector I, so these two will become zero and we will be left with this. And we will have uh, P divided by square root two A and I dot I will become one. So this is, and this will, since this is the dot product, this will give us the scalar, right? So this is, this is the magnitude. So we will write that this is the magnitude. So the magnitude of the moment along the edge AB is P divided by square root two into A. Similarly, the part C says that about the moment about the diagonal AG of the cube. So for part C, we have to find the moment about the diagonal AG. Now, as we have determined the moment uh, about that point A and the diagonal AG, so this is diagonal AG. So if we project that moment on the diagonal AG, that will be the moment about that AG line. So the dot product always gives us the projection of a given vector onto a particular uh, vector. So if we take the dot product of that moment about point A, with the unit vector acting from A to G, that will give us the magnitude of that moment along that diagonal AG. So we can say this is MA dot part with the unit vector along AG. We can say that the moment vector about that point A is this. We can say this is P divided by square root two AI plus P divided by square root two AJ plus P divided by square root two a k and dot product with the unit vector from a to g. So the unit vector from a to g is the position vector from a to g divided by the magnitude of that position vector. So now we have to find the position vector from a to g using the same method. We will start from a and we'll try to read that point g while traveling along the x, y, and z. So we can say that this will be. So from A, we need to travel A units in the positive X, so plus AI. Then A units in the negative J, this is plus Y, so minus AJ. And then A units in the negative Z, so minus AK. And the magnitude will be A square plus A square plus A square under the square root, or we can say three A square. or we can say this is equal to square root 3a. And we can further simplify this is, we can divide this each and every component by this. So we can write this is uh, a will cancel out as well. We will be left with So now if we take the dot product, we will multiply i with i, j with j, and k with k. So we will have p divided by square root 2 into square root 3 a, and i dot i is 1. Again, we will have p divided by square root 2 into square root 3 a, and this is plus into minus is minus. So this is minus, and j dot j is 1. And similarly, we will have plus into minus minus P divided by square root two into square root three and K dot K is one. So this is, we can say that square root two into square root three is square root six. So we can say P divided by square root six A. And we have one minus one minus one. And this is 
we can say this will become 1 minus 1 will become 0 we will be left with minus 1 so we can say minus p divided by square root 6a remember that this dot product will always give us the magnitude so that is the magnitude of the moment which is along ag and this is we can say m a in g magnitude and we got minus p divided by square root 6a so now what does this minus sign means that since we took the dot product from a to g so let me draw that uh, line which is from a to g uh, we can say this is the position vector which is acting from a to g since we got the minus sign the minus signs means that the moment is in the opposite direction of a g so this means that the moment is in this direction and this means that the moment is like this so if we curl our right hand fingers in this curl direction so the thumb will point out in the opposite direction of that position vector which is acting from a to g so the minus sign tells us that the moment uh, which this force p is producing about that uh, diagonal a g is in this direction and which is obvious you guys can see that this force p is going to produce the moment about that a g in this direction so the minus sign tells us this that the moment is acting in the opposite direction that is uh, in the opposite direction of the unit vector so the unit vector is from a to g and the moment is acting from g to a and now the part d tell us that using the result of part c determine the perpendicular distance between a g and f c now the perpendicular distance between a g and f c so that force p is acting along that f c so we can find uh, using the definition of the moment we can say that this is part d so in part d we can say that the perpendicular distance between that a g and f c so we we know that the magnitude of the moment about a g can also be written as the perpendicular distance between a g and f c multiplied by that force p so this is the scalar definition right using the scalar method we find the moment like this the perpendicular distance between that force p and that a g so this will be we can say that this will be the perpendicular distance between point uh, between this line fc and that ag and we know that the magnitude of this moment ag is this so we can say this is equal to minus p divided by square root 6 into a and dividing both sides by p this will cancel out so we will have the perpendicular distance between that diagonal ag and ac the, there is no need to write the minus sign because the minus sign only tells us the direction so we will write this as positive because the distance cannot be negative so we can say that this will be one divided by square root six into a units so this is the perpendicular distance between that diagonal ag and this fc line so this is the solution of this simple problem i hope all this discussion will help you in your learning uh, such more problems related to finding the moment about a point about a line and finding the distance between two given lines so this is the solution of uh, this particular problem i hope this will help do subscribe engineers academy for the solution of such more problems from vector mechanics for engineers by baron johnston